Now, unfortunately, when we look at the history of these intra-faith dialogue that have taken place amongst Muslims, what we find is that most of the times there have been two approaches to these dialogues. One approach is very exclusivist that starts on the basis that I am right, you are wrong, and I can say anything about you, mock, jeer, laugh, ridicule what you believe in, because I know I am right and if you want to follow the truth follow it and if you don't I don't really care. The other extreme has been a very pluralistic approach to say we have been discussing the differences between us for 14 centuries and nothing has come out of it. It is about time that as Muslims we move on and so we should stop discussing these issues. For how long will we keep talking about Ghadir and Saqifa and Khad, Badr and Ohad and Khandaq and so on and so forth? History is history. What has happened has happened. We can't change that. But as Muslims, we are in a pitiful state in the world today. And therefore, we need to look beyond history and move on. So this has been the other approach to say, let us forget our differences and let us come together as one religion and focus on what is common between us and move on. The problem with that, as I shall demonstrate in these 12 nights, is that it actually does not resolve the problem. It just suppresses it and it festers as long as it is not discussed. And it is only a matter of time before it resurfaces. There is a third approach that I will be taking that is neither one that is high-handed, filled with hubris, nor the other that is very pluralistic and, in a sense, sweeping everything under the rug. And this approach is to say that a lot of times the misunderstandings we have amongst ourselves as Muslims is not because of what we say, but how we say it. And that we can learn as Muslims to have a very candid conversation but one that is respectful. And this is not very difficult to understand. Supposing we had some strife and some tension in a relationship in our family, whether it is between us and our spouses or us and our parent or a sibling or a child, how do you resolve these differences? Let us suppose a man and his wife have a very a, a troubled relationship in their marriage. Supposing they decide, let us not talk about it, let's just forget about it, that there was any differences between us. Is the problem going to go away? It's not going to go away. It will stay on both minds and it will remain there, but the problem is not going to go away. Supposing they decide, let's talk about it, but the conversation is very high-handed and there's a lot of blame and abuse and pointing fingers. Is it going to solve anything? Well, it's predictable how that marriage is going to end. The only way that that relationship can be mended is if the two come together and say, look, we're both human. We both make mistakes. If we truly love each other and we want to repair this marriage, then let us talk to each other the language of love. So you both sit down, each one expresses their grievances, the other one listens to the other one, each one apologizes to the other, you seek to understand, and then you seek to be understood, and from there that marriage can move on. The same things that were said in hostility are now being said again, but what has changed is how it is being said. In other words, I don't need to labor this point, but if we are to solve the problems in Islam today between the major sects in Islam, what is needed is this element of sincerity, of being genuine, of humility, of really wanting to reach out to each other with compassion, with empathy. And this is the language actually that the Quran teaches us. You see, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala He is the messenger of Allah. He is sent to polytheists. 
he knows what he is preaching is true and absolutely true he has no doubt and there is not an iota of you know doubt in his conviction that what he has is true but look at what Allah tells him that when you preach to the polytheist what should you say to them this is surah saba chapter 34 verse 24 he says first ask them who is it that sustains you in the heavens and the earth is it not Allah and then tell them wa inna wa iyakum la ala hudan aw fi dalalim mubin and you and us either one of us is on guidance and the other one is on misguidance this is the messenger of Allah he is being told don't tell them I am guided and you are misguided no tell them one of us is guided and one of us is misguided come let us talk and find out this is Khatimul Anbiya so Allah is teaching us the language we must speak and this is not hidden from you that unfortunately unfortunately even amongst the Shia we have groups that have chosen to promote the message of the Ahlul Bayt in a manner that serves no purpose